let us see the components of reticular formation okay see this is pons this is medulla there are three group of neurons collection of neurons in this area which is present in the rostral portion of this medulla and the pons somewhere in the midline okay so this group of neurons is called as median median group of neurons what are the median group of neurons we have got raphe magnus nucleus locus ceruleus these two are the two important uh, collection of neurons present in the median group then we have got medial medial group this medial group has got magnocellular neurons magnocellular neurons of the medulla magnocellular neurons of the pons right so magnocellular means they have got big sized to neurons then you have got lateral this is lateral group of neurons they have got parvocellular neurons parvo means smaller okay so the cells present in this cluster they are small size so they are called as parvocellular neurons the central uh, nucleus of the medulla and the pons they belong to the parvocellular group okay so these are the three different nuclear aggregates forming the reticular formation one is a median which includes the raphe magnus nucleus and locus ceruleus nucleus the central one and the medial group of uh, magnocellular neurons of medulla and the pons okay and lateral group of parvocellular neurons again medulla central nucleus of the medulla and the pons these are the components of reticular formation apart from these nucleus which are delineated there are some neurons which are responsible for maintaining the cardiac function they are called as cardiac centers we have got respiratory centers in the medulla we have got vasomotor center in the medulla salivatory centers in the medulla chemoreceptor neurons present in the medulla these are all actually functional aggregates these neurons doesn't fit into any of the anatomical aggregates but they have got functional a uh, similarity so that is why they are called as functional aggregates these also belong to the reticular formation coming to the afferent and efferent connections so reticular formation is the one which is connecting to almost all parts of the brain its afferent connections that is from where it receives the information it receives the information from the cortex from hypothalamus from cerebellum from basal ganglia okay from spinal cord okay so most of these structures they give afferent information to the reticular formation what about the efferent connections efferent connections from the reticular formation also goes to all these areas okay so efferent connection goes to the cortex efferent connection goes to the cerebellum efferent connection goes to the basal ganglia thalamus hypothalamus and spinal cord and also to tectum midbrain structure other areas of the midbrain structure like tectum sensory areas sensory uh, areas related to specific sensory areas all these are also uh, connected to the reticular formation